Boils well that hens well. Who's ready in order to investigate corporate capitalism as well than fuel, I guess? Well, let's go courtesy of Sierra Online and holy shit the noises. So Hoyle's Well was a recreation or clone of a game which was available in the arcade called Hen Theater. This game in particular was not very well known and has been pretty much forgotten, while Hoyle's Well on the other hand got pretty recognized and is pretty much still remembered even up to this day. It even got re-released in 1990 on MS-DOS, which is kind of crazy, I mean, this game first came out in 1983, so yeah, this game definitely had some kind of impact on uh, gaming as a whole, and I remember in particular a whole lot of clones or rip-offs of this game, so yeah, it definitely did something right. So the premise of the game is to dig all the way underground in order to heat all of the little pellets, but you have to watch out for any of the incoming enemies on the side because they must not touch your line because otherwise they will sever it and you will lose a life. So that's a game where you constantly have to scan the entire screen in order to localize threats in order to reel your entire line back before it gets cut. While you also have to keep a lookout for the multicolored handville which will give you a whole lot of points if you collect it and... Similar to a whole bunch of arcade games in the time, points were used in order to give you extra life, so you always had to keep an eye on them. But yeah, not only you have to be careful, but you also have to be efficient, because this is also a game that, that comes with a time limit. So that little pellet is like a slowdown that will make it so that all of the enemies are gonna be incredibly slowed down and that is really useful in order for you to get the pellets that are either hard to get or that are all the way down at the bottom because of course the deeper you dig the harder things get. Also don't collect the multicolored potion because no that's poison, if you hit it you're gonna die and you lose a life. But yeah, it's a pretty fun game. It kind of is reminiscent of Pac-Man, except it's got a little bit more depth. Well, if you know what I mean, because you just keep digging down. <laughs> but yeah, it's not as simple as just avoiding everything on the current level that you're at. For instance, I died because the top enemy just ended up cutting my line, and therefore this cost me my life. But yeah, almost everything in this game will give you points, so... Alright. Yay, we got... Oh, yeah. We got a life, and then we immediately lost it. Good job. But at least dying will also reset your time limit, so you've got that going for you. It's not as bad as you think, but with that said, if you die too often, it's gonna be game over, which is probably what will happen fairly soon, because oh boy did I stop caring when I got to this one level. But yeah, also what makes this game pretty fun in comparison to games like Pac-Man and everything is that there's a bunch of different layouts that you can have in this in this game. Not every level is just all about going into the different uh, horizontal plane and just eat all of the pellets in a straight line without any kind of worry. Yeah, as you progress more and more through the game, the level layouts are gonna become more maze-ish and will require you to take a whole lot more twists and turns. And all while you have to keep scanning the screen constantly to make sure that nothing is gonna come in order to heat your line. So, yeah, it doesn't take a whole lot of time for this game to just become really tense, and it really doesn't help because of the incredibly ominous humming sound that you keep hearing all of the time. This thing just drives me nuts every time that I play it, just like, no, I, I'm not here looking at the screen or whatever for Jaws to appear, I'm just trying to collect dots underground. But hey, if they wanted to make you tense, holy shit, they managed to make it really, really well. Also, if you collect uh, one of the slow motion things, whenever there's a potion or an evil potion on the screen, it's good for you because then it will also destroy the potion and therefore will remove the chances of you being destroyed by it. So you always gotta pick up a good time in order for you to get the whatever will make you invincible. Well, not invincible, but... It, everything goes so slow that you might as well just be invincible because that's just about the same thing. Alright, we made it all the way to level 5! And apparently this one oil factory has just been built over the layer of hell. What's with the overly ominous orange here? It just looks like we're going into Dante's Inferno. 
even though it doesn't look like that at all, but I just wanted to say Inferno because it's a cool name. But yeah, this level is... Uh, I was gonna say this level is pretty mean, but then this uh, poisonous potion just decided to spawn right in front of my eyes. Or my mouth, because I don't think that this thing has a mouth per se. But yeah, this level is very treacherous to navigate, and therefore it's gonna be really hard for you to succeed here. I don't think I've ever beaten this level, and when I replayed the game lately, I couldn't even get to this level, so I'm already gonna chalk getting to that level as a victory, so yay me! Also, here's two awards that you will never see in today's games ever. In 1984, the US gaming magazine computer game called this game the maze game of the year. It's like, was there really such a huge competition in mazes in video games or something that you had to have an entire gaming award or whatever just dedicated to this? It's just like... Nowadays, we just consider mazes as being tedious and unfun, also I totally did not mean to uh, leave that one uh, slow down pellet alone without any kind of regard, just like, I kinda reeled in too fast. But that's okay, because we're totally going to win this level, and I swear that I'm not going to wipe out, even though, yeah, time is running out, and we still have- Oh no, I reeled in back in the poison, and therefore hands are- adventures into oil extractions, but yeah, they ended up being pretty well. So, and overall, a pretty fun game. Pretty simplistic, but it's pretty tense, and it can make for a couple of fun rounds every once in a while. And there's difficulty settings which will make the enemies even faster, so if you want a challenge, then... Well, this game is going to serve you well. So, that's it for Hurl's Well. Hope you enjoyed it.